Now, the Iranian-born British comedian Shapi Kosandi was just 10 years old when she decided she wanted to make people laugh for a living. She's drawn on her early relationship with her brother and her upbringing as the daughter of an exiled writer for her latest show at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. And she joined us now in the studio. Thanks very much for being here. Pleasure. Now, comedy is really in your family, isn't it? You're married to a comedian and your father and brother are comedians. Yeah, that's right. Although we're going through a divorce. Oh, really? Not my father and brother and I, but me and that's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck with them. Um, no, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, there's a lot of comedians going on in my life. You know, I have a child as well. He came out with his first joke. He's four. He said, "Where does mummy keep her knickers? In the bottom drawer." I oh, I like it was that one. quite good. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be cracking the whip and making you earn his keep in it. So you've had decades of material to draw on as a result of this family. Yeah, I guess so. I think in our family. Um, Having a sense of humour was very much encouraged. So we have the sort of dad that would take notice if you made him laugh, but not particularly care how you were doing at school. I'm sure my dad still doesn't isn't sure if I went to university or not. He's like, oh yes, whatever. But, you know. <laughs> so how does your Iranian origins? How does that influence your comedy? Well, it did hugely for a long time. Um, I did I did a show in Melbourne five years ago called Asylum Speaker that was massively about well it was all about our family moving over here, but the thing with stand up you just say what you're do you talk about what you're obsessed about yourself and I feel like I've said so much and talked so much about my Iranian culture but now I mean I'm a single mum I'm doing the show about my brother I've, I've sort of just uh, I talk about other stuff all my stuff's very personal mm. so how so, is this show different. Well, this show is, I like to think, it's a celebration of siblinghood. It's, it's hugely about um, my brother and I and families and how my life's changed uh, and, and how relationships with your siblings change as you get older. Because I think that the relationship between uh, brothers and sisters isn't... Um, it's not celebrated enough. Because when, when I went through my divorce, it, my, my brother was my primary carer. Mm. Because when something massive like that happens, after about six months, your friends selfishly go back to their own lives. Yeah. But uh, your siblings really come through for you. So it's a uh, hugely a comedy show about, um, you know, loving someone but also you know beating them up yeah so where does the beating, where does the beating up come in oh we've, all throughout we've all, the childhood we've all, we've all done it as siblings oh anyone who's ever shared a room with a sibling understands how fiercely um uh, aggressive you can get towards yeah. one another over land this is my side this is your side and him being a boy and sort of you know growing up and going to university and like dating not just, all my not friends just a room the lounge room as well <laughs> and the yeah. remote control yeah the remote control Give yeah it to me. And our parents used to just leave us to it. Like, you know, nowadays we're all like, now then, let's talk about this. <laughs> and, you know, so who like, won most of the fights, the Barneys? I was always stronger than him. And I think uh, I got to about 13 when the fact that I was a girl then worked against me. I was in denial about the fact that I was a girl for a long time because he was my big brother. Mm. And I used to uh, play with his action man. Did you have action man? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you take his pants off to have a look to see if... OK. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. You would have been sadly disappointed. <laughs> I know, I drew one on. You've obviously moved then away from, I guess, the more political activism kind of comedy that you were doing before. And uh, I know that in previous shows you've said, I try so hard not to offend anyone. Were you <laughs> finding that even though you were trying, you still were? Do you know, the, the thing about doing political stuff in stand-up, I never sit down and go, I'm going to write some political jokes, or I'm not going to write political jokes. I really just talk about what's going on for me at the moment and what I feel um, uh, passionate about. And it, uh, I can't help peppering what I talk about with social issues and politics. It's just the way I am. If you go for a drink with me, I'll have a laugh with you about one thing and the next minute I'll be... And another thing about the Middle East. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it can... Uh, but it, it's primarily to have fun and to and to make people laugh, and I think uh, it's a bit of a tragic comedy. The Middle East generally, isn't it? I mean, it's very. You know, I, I brought it up again. You see, I couldn't <laughs> help but bring it up. But in yeah. fairness, we did ask you. <laughs> yeah, you did. It would have been odd if I just stared at you. Isn't that so? No, and I, I think, and I do talk about the thing about offending people, um, and it, it's not out of a, a weakness. It, it's, it's. I think political correctness is a. It's, it's just about politeness. Yeah. And so when you accidentally offend people, I go. Well, I sometimes make it worse and dig a hole, but anyway, it's all in my show. Yeah, going back to your Iranian heritage, many would argue Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is a perfect source of comedy. And jokes. Yes, Ahmadinejad. 
Um, apparently, sorry, that that phase. <laughs> my your, brother's got your, this thing that um, um, he was in the in the in this is a breakfast program. But he he was in the bathroom and the wind changed direction, right. so his face stayed like that. <laughs> it's quite a good uh, likeness. What what do you think of the way the country is tracking at the moment? It's there are concerns about its nuclear program. It is increasingly isolated. Mm, I don't have any inside information, but um, I just hope, hope, hope that it, uh, the tensions with Iran can be resolved peacefully. That's... Without people pressing buttons and missiles flying. Yeah. yeah. You know, someone said to me recently, like, uh, I was on the... My plane over here was delayed, and someone said to me, oh, you should have just told them you're Iranian, and then they would have got it moving. And I was like, um, I'm from Britain, and I think that there have been more civilian casualties at British hands recently. Yeah. Than, yeah. But there we are. People have their little little ideas. But Iranian people are, are very secular people, um, and uh, we're very... Um, we're very yeah, we're very different to the way the images of us on TV. Well, we'll have to leave it there, Shafi Kosandi. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.